iOS 16.3 has just arrived with a few new features, changes, and bug fixes. And in this video, you're going to see those new changes along with an update on the performance, battery life, and what to expect next. Now, as far as the size goes for this update, it could range anywhere from four to 500 megabytes all the way up to over five gigabytes, depending on the version you are coming from. The build number for 16.3 is 20D47. And then we do also have a new modem firmware update update for most devices, including the iPhone 14 series. So this could lead to improved cell connectivity. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.3? And the first thing is support for physical security keys, which is going to add another layer of security for your Apple ID account. So if you go into your settings here and go to your iCloud section and then to passwords and security, right below your trusted phone number, you will see a new section that says add security keys. And once you tap on that, you will see the setup right here. Now, just to give you guys a quick breakdown of what this is, this basically gives you the option of using a hardware security key as a two factor authentication method for your Apple ID account. So this is going to basically replace the text message or the verification code from another Apple device form of authenticating, which obviously those, you know, have their loopholes where other people can get into your account. But with a physical security key, it's going to be literally impossible for somebody to get into your Apple ID account unless they have your physical security key. So this is going to be the most secure way of, you know, locking down your Apple ID account. Now, one thing to note is that you will need two security keys. So I will leave links down below to my favorites. So we have the Yubico YubiKey and the Google Titan. Both of those are pretty solid options. I personally use the YubiKeys. So when you go ahead and tap on add security keys right here, it will tell you that you need two security keys. So once you have them right there, tap on continue, and then you get the window to add security keys. Now I have NFC keys, which means I will just tap them at the top of this iPhone like I were doing Apple Pay and it will go ahead and set them up and now my Apple ID account will be as secure as possible. Now also if we go back to our Apple ID section and go to iCloud and then go down to advanced data protection this is now available worldwide. So this was limited to certain countries on 16.2 when it was first introduced, but now with 16.3, it is available worldwide. And what this does is basically adds end-to-end -end encryption for all of your data that's backed up via iCloud backup. Now we also have some changes with emergency SOS. So you will first notice that we have a new option on here, a new toggle for call quietly. That was not there previously. And it says, if you start an emergency call using the gestures of above warning alarms and flashes will be silenced so you will no longer be startled by that shockingly loud alarm sound if you accidentally you know triggered emergency sos and then call with five presses is now call with five button presses and the verbiage below that has also been changed and that top toggle used to be call with hold but now it's call with hold and release so basically if you act like you're going to turn off your phone so if you press and hold on a volume button and the side button and continue holding that past this you will start to to, you know, call emergency services and you will see that countdown right there. So that is new here in 16.3. This is what it was like before on 16.2. So I'm going to do this and you can see it's a little bit different. The animation's different and you can see it was pretty loud right there. Sorry for startling you. <laughs> that literally made me jump. And that's why I'm glad to see that we have that call quietly toggle right there. I would definitely recommend keeping that turned on. If we had to add a new wallpaper, you could see if we scroll down, we have a new section for Unity. So before Unity was just kind of mixed in with the collections right here, but now we have a whole different section for Unity and there's a new Unity wallpaper. So this one has been there since 16.0, but this is the new one just introduced here with 16. And you will see that we have this nice, really heavy font right here, which is exclusive to the Unity wallpapers. We also have different colors of this. You can see all the different variations for this Unity wallpaper, which of course is for Black History Month. So pretty cool. You can kind of change up how this looks. It does also come with a watch face for the latest watchOS release. There's also even a new watch band that is Unity themed. Now this update not only adds support for the new HomePod second generation, but it also activates the hidden temperature and humidity sensor in the HomePod mini. So the HomePod mini has always had 
this temperature and humidity sensor, but it's just now been activated with 16.3 on iOS. And also you need to make sure that your HomePod is updated to HomePod OS 16.3. So for example, if we go into master bathroom right here, where I only have a HomePod, you could see up top that we have the temperature and humidity in that specific room. And it's the HomePod mini that is reading out the climate right there. But that's not even the coolest part because you can also add automations based on the temperature or humidity. So if we go to our plus up there and go to add automation and then go to a sensor detect something, if you select, let's just say master bathroom, which is where we have one of our home pods. If we detect that the humidity sensor, you know, rises above a certain percentage, let's say 55% and we tap on next, you could have it do something else based on the humidity rising. So if you wanted your shades to open, if you wanted your AC to turn on, whatever other smart, you know, home product that you have into the home application, you could have that set to do things based on the humidity rising or lowering or the temperature rising or lowering. We even get widgets for the climate sensors as well. So if you go to your lock screen and add a widget, you will see right here under home, we do have climate sensor there for the HomePods. Now we also have quite a few other cool changes for the HomePod in HomePod OS 16.3. So we have remastered ambient sounds. They can now be added to scenes, automations, and alarms in the home application. Find my on the home pod now allows you to ask Siri for the location of friends and family. Recurring home automations can now be set up using just your voice. The Siri confirmation tone will now play to indicate when smart home requests are completed for accessories that may not visibly show a change or are located in a different room. Audio tuning optimizes spoken content such as podcasts for even greater clarity on HomePod second generation and HomePod first generation. And then finally, updated volume controls on the HomePod first generation give you more granular adjustments at lower volume. We also have this new splash screen for the HomePod in 16.3. So just a little bit of a different UI here for handoff telling you how to do it. We have a very small change in the shortcuts application. If you go to add action and then go to get details of contacts or anything where there's a big drop down, you will see that we have a new variables drop down at the very top. Whereas before on 16.2, that was all the way down here at the bottom and each one was just kind of individualized. Now it's a little drop down at the top. Also get wallpaper is now get all wallpapers. So both do the same thing as you can see from the description here, but the name of the shortcut action has just been changed. This update also includes quite a few bug fixes. So number one, we have a fix for an Apple Music bug that's been around since like August of last year, where songs would play the clean version rather than the original original explicit version of that song. So that has been fixed. And also there's another fix for Apple Music where it says addresses an issue where Siri may not respond properly to music requests. So those were two separate bugs. Both have been fixed here in 16.3. We also finally have a fix for the black lock screen bug where sometimes your lock screen would just change to an all black image. It would just kind of overwrite your wallpaper. This update also fixes an issue that a lot of users thought was a hardware defect and that is the horizontal lines bug and Apple says fixes an issue where horizontal lines may May temporarily appear while waking up iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now they only mentioned the 14 Pro Max, but apparently this was happening on the 14 Pro and Pro Max. So I would assume it is fixed for both devices. We also see a fix for an issue where the home lock screen widget does not accurately display home app status. For those who use CarPlay, we have a resolved issue where Siri requests and CarPlay may not be understood correctly. And then there is also a fix for an issue in Freeform where some drawing strokes create Created with Apple Pencil or your finger may not appear on shared boards. Now, as far as the performance goes, I honestly have not noticed any significant changes in raw performance. So I would kind of just temper your expectations if you're expecting to see a performance boost with 16.3. I think it feels pretty much the same as 16.2. Now, some users may see, you know, an improvement in terms of just UI bugs and, you know, maybe different visual bugs that you saw in 16.2. Those could be resolved here with 16.3, but overall raw performance with gaming and things like that, don't expect a major change. You could see the Geekbench scores here, 1865 on the single core, 5380 on the multi-core, very, very similar to that 
of 16.2. However, when it comes to battery life, battery life has actually been pretty solid for me. Now, I'm not sure that it's too much better than 16.2, but it does seem very good so far and like a slight improvement over 16.2, which I will take it, you know. Now, I will say that if you do have battery drain issues, this update could fix those battery drain issues, but don't expect to notice major changes unless you do have like major battery drain. Because if you already had good battery life in 16.2, chances are you're going to have just about the same here in 16.3, maybe slightly better like it has been in my case. And then finally, let's talk about if you should update or not. Now, if you're on iOS 16.2, I say yes, go ahead and update. You're going to get several bug fixes, you're going to get some new features, and you're going to be keeping your device as up to date as possible. And and safe from security threats. Apple has not released the security notes yet for 16.3, but I'm sure there are going to be quite a few fixes in here as far as, you know, patches for certain exploits. Now, if you're on any other version of iOS 16 or even iOS 15, I would say it depends. So if you want to add the physical security key to your Apple ID account, which I do recommend for all users, you do need to update to 16.3 for that. Obviously, that's a new feature. So you do need to update for that. However, if you don't care about that feature and nothing in this update stands out to you and makes you want to update, just stay put where you are, especially if everything is running just fine, like battery life performance. You're not really getting FOMO over any of these features. You're not going to have the updated security patches, but you know, I can't fault you for staying on a stable build for whatever reason you have. And then I did also want to look a little bit further ahead and see what's in the pipeline for Apple. What's coming up next for Apple? So the next major iOS release will be iOS 16.4. Now, I'm not expecting that until sometime in March. So we are still in January right now, if you're watching this in January. Now in February, we could see iOS 16.3.1, and that is going to be more of a bug fix update. I would actually expect that sometime in February, just to patch up some of the bugs that are you know, destined to be found on iOS 16.3, especially when it comes to security vulnerabilities and things like that. So expect 16.3.1 in February, 16.4 most likely in March, and 16.4 might be the update that includes Includes the new emoji. So keep a lookout for that. So there you have it. That is iOS 16.3 and everything new in the software. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS coverage just like this. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.